I'll call this meeting to order uh, for the select board meeting on October 15th, uh, town of Conway. Uh, we're being recorded by FCAT as usual, and within a couple days, you should find it on our FCAT channel on YouTube. If you search for FCAT Media, all one word, FCAT Media, you will see all of our uh, all of our select board meetings and school committee meetings, and, and if you go to channel uh, 12, you will see, no, channel 23, you will see government programming for all the towns on Comcast. So, uh, first item is we need to approve the minutes from, uh, originally from September 30th. Did you look at them? Yes. Well done. Great. I thought so, too. So I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the September 30th minutes? Yes, I'll second. Okay, all in favor, yes, we'll yes. all say aye. That sounds good. And then we have more minutes from uh, uh, October 1st. Which was not an executive session and simply uh, consisted of rescheduling the meeting. Which, right, which we, we attempted to have a meeting, and, and, uh, but then we canceled it because one of the participants requested it be in executive session. So we did that. So we have minutes to reflect that. That, that seemed good? Yes, very good. Me too. So we'll uh, approve, uh, I'll vote aye, aye, yes. so we'll approve that. Um, We'll have the motion in the very, very short in the minutes. Uh, I'll make that motion. Yes, <laughs> thank you. So, so I'll approve those. Yes, yes. Um, we have uh, four uh, warrants. We have a vendor warrant for one hundred and sixty-one thousand one sixty-two, a payroll warrant for one hundred and eleven seven twenty-seven, a payroll deduction warrant for twenty-eight thousand twenty, and a student activity account. For fourteen hundred and eighty dollars. Do we? Yes, I've reviewed make them. A they motion. Mean, they seem yes, good. They make sense. No yes. question. Yeah. Yep. So I'll make a motion. We accept them. Yes. Second. All in favor. Yes. Aye. 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 Yeah. Aye. I do note that in our packet was the minutes for the October eighth and and commission and we'll do that. We'll, we'll get we'll to that. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Good. Okay. So. Meetings attended by select board members. Yes, uh, the joint joint union thirty eight frontier meeting. Um, lots of stuff there, and uh, the state the state mediation, first state me second state mediation for our teachers, um, which was last Thursday. Nice four hour affair. I get to do it all over again this Thursday for another four hour affair. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yes, yes, um, I will hold my tongue. Hope springs eternal. And no predictions. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No. no, none that I can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I did. Uh, I did go to the first. Uh, the first town academy as well. That's not really a meeting. No, those are great. Um, yeah, but I won't be. I wasn't at the second one. I won't be at the third one. And then, depending on the 24th, that's the, I got asked to go to that dinner, the select board. Oh, Frank, yes. Frank County select board. At GCC. At GCC. So we will have to choose whether we go to that or Tom's Academy. Uh, For public safety. On yes. the 24th. Public works coming up this Thursday. So that's not, you know, not select board business necessarily, but something that we could talk about whether you could have the town academy without us. <laughs> so so, uh, so I, yes, I went to both town academy meetings in the last two weeks, and, and I'll put in a plug for the town academy meetings for people who haven't been attending. There are quite a few people who come. The first one was explaining town government in general and about the, how the select board works. And, uh, and the second one was about town finances and the assessors and how your taxes are calculated. Probably in excruciating detail more than many people wanted to know, but it was, it was excellent. So, and there's more to come. Uh, I'm just trying to think, do we have, Ellen, we had, a, we had a Conway Cable meeting 
uh, pushing the ball forward for our franchise renewal with Comcast. Um, and mostly what we're looking at now is really trying to nail down exactly the best way and how to connect the Conway Grammar School and the town hall over here to the town office where we have a cable connection that to, to, get, to get cable programs taped here in Conway live on, to the, on down to Deerfield and get them on the air. So today we don't have those things like this one's not coming live. So the goal is to get them live. So then that's what we're looking at. Okay. I'd like for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to have town meeting be live as opposed to as opposed to taped and shown a couple days later. And it's possible we have tried to put town meeting on live through the wonders of the internet and it sometimes doesn't work very well. So it's much better if we can actually do it over a reliable fiber optic line. Can you explain um, anything about the MBI cable that's going through town? Is, is, uh, M MBI fiber, rather, is that being used at all, to your knowledge? The, the MBI back By around, Conway. I'll say the late 2000, you know, in, the, in around 2000, I, I, I'm guessing, I can't remember exactly when it went in, they put in um, a fiber optic line connecting 125 towns in Western Massachusetts, and we were one of them. And each of those towns could put a number of municipal buildings, uh, could sign up a number of municipal buildings to connect to that cable. So we connected the library and the school, town hall, town office, sure, sure. The fire Critical house. access points or something, I forget what their acronym yeah, was. Yeah, there was a term like that. But we could have up to 10, and we connected, I don't think we had 10. Um, mm -hmm. and. And those were the customers of the MBI fiber when it got connected. And, and now that we've switched over in the law, mm. no homes and no private mm. uh, you know, companies could connect to that cable. It was solely for municipal purposes. And now that we've switched to Comcast. So many towns never even used that MBI because it was more expensive than Comcast when it went in. Some towns used it if they didn't have a good Comcast or if they didn't have Comcast, if they had a cable company that wasn't as good as Comcast. Um, and we found that the MBI kept raising their prices and mm -hmm. their, their baud rate, you know, their, their connection rate was very slow and we, got, mm -hmm. we went back to Comcast and got much cheaper service and at much faster rates. The school uses it, but that, that was a separate program within the program, though. That was a... I'm not sure about the school. The school could be using yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. When, when that first came in, that was the night and day difference. Yeah. Because uh -huh. um, that was high speed was unavailable. And then the, what they're doing now is yeah. just what everybody else on the planet does, which is really neat. It's great. OK. So Thank you. That's, that's the MBI. So the MBI, for us, the MBI comes in from Ashfield, comes down Route 116, ends here in Conway. Doesn't go any further than Conway. It stops right here. Uh, mm. so. Originally, we thought it was going to come down 91 and come in here, but they changed the route. So it now comes from, from Ashfield. OK. Um, <coughs> any public comments? No public comments. Uh, old business. I think we have no old business. So new business. So our first new business are cemetery issues. Uh, okay. uh, and I have I have four things on the agenda um, to discuss. One is that um, we've gotten the town has gotten a request for a plot in Shirkshire Cemetery. Uh, another has to do with the use of the assessor's GPS camera. Another one is uh, approval for mileage, which uh, Peter's going to talk about. And another um, one is possibilities for the cemetery commission, and the select board acts as the cemetery commission now. But um, if I can just get one of them uh, out of the way. Um, we have gotten a request for a plot in Shirkshire Cemetery. We have uh, North Shirkshire Cemetery. We have um, virtually no information on that. I the information say, I, I, I don't know. You that, know. that I've gotten is that um, if there are any plots available, there are very few. 
Um, the request was from a couple who lives in Asheville, but they live just beyond the North Shire Cemetery, so they walk by it every day on their walk and um, were inquiring as to whether there were plots available. So um, part, of, part of my increased interest recently in this is to answer that question for them. Uh, so, and I think, um, Peter, you, uh, are you going to talk about the assessor's mm -hmm. camera? Do you want to do one at a time? Uh, I think uh, well, if you have comments on sure. that. Sure. I mean, well, first of all, there has to be, uh, um, you want to just, just assume that the answer might be yes. There has to be rules. There has to be some, I mean, you can't just, it's a historic cemetery with mostly 18th century gravestones. Yeah. And, and they have, uh, whatever gets put in would have to sort of, I don't, I don't okay. know how you describe it. It would have to, it, it would have to go with it. That sounds like a great issue for the cemetery commission. Um, but we're the cemetery commission. Yes. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm there not, has I'm to not be saying go, rules go about with that. it. Are there no rules or are there no... There's well, it, no. I, have, I have virtually nothing on anything having to do with cemeteries. Mm. I have a couple of probably incomplete plot maps. My first instinct would be, is there deed restrictions or, you know, just on the cemetery itself? Is there something like that? that I do have copies of cemetery plot deeds. All right. I mean, because I, like, I, I, I wonder there whether is. there's a restriction for town residents or something like that. Right, right. Well, that's why I mentioned that they, that they weren't. And um, so there, there are issues that are starting to percolate. Yeah. As, uh, so I'm just sort of bringing that up now for further discussion as we... So if we act as a cemetery commission, would that be a separate meeting that we would hold, or could we do that? Well, yeah, it would be a separate meeting. It would be a separate. I mean, it could be within the select board meeting, but it would be I separate, so. separate, yeah, separate, separately right. noticed. But but there are there are some other ways of looking at it, which I will uh, go into the, later. Yeah, another possibility I would think is to have a separate. Um, um, Board or uh, cemetery commission for the select Absolutely. board to appoint Absolutely. people who were interested yeah. in doing the work, which could include people from the select board, but it could also include people who aren't on the select board yeah, who are interested in doing the work, of which there are some. Uh, to skip to that item, so we could, yeah. so if we yeah. think about the fourth one first, the yeah. fourth item, the cemetery commission. Yeah, I think there are. You know Massachusetts general laws of uh, relating to the appointment of cemetery commissions, which we would have to research. And yeah, w without uh, appointing one, all without appointing uh, a, a necessary body, the select board is by default that body. Right. Right. So now that there are more um, substantive issues to talk about, I don't know. Whether Do you know other people who might want to serve on the commission? I think uh, you would yes. like to serve on the yeah, commission. I, I would. And, and, I'm uh, one. Uh, yes. Um, I, um, we're kind of bouncing around to different subjects. Yes, we are. But, um, but um, I was recently contacted by um, a town resident who um, is uh, interested in helping with the uh, mapping of the cemeteries. And he uh, has experience with the Mount Auburn Cemetery in the eastern mm. part of the state. And I think uh, he might be a prime candidate. Um, you know, uh, somebody, I think it would be appropriate to have somebody from the Historical Commission uh, to keep in line with the historical importance of the, our cemeteries. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think there would be other people interested. I think we, uh, the last time I was here, I m mentioned the, <coughs> my interest of having a workshop, uh, um, you know, uh, to start uh, restoring the cemeteries and getting the stuff set up. Um, I think uh, we might find some other town <coughs> residents that would be willing to serve on the uh, cemetery commission that way. Um, 
I think we could find people. Did we need three people? I don't know. Right. Well, I think that would be the minimum. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think the place would to start would be you know to see what the law, the general laws. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm happy to move, you know, to do a little bit of that work, but I wanted to introduce it anyway. And and that that also ties in with the, the use of uh, what he was talking about, the, the project with the use of the assessor's <coughs> GPS camera as part of the mapping project. <coughs> um, uh, <coughs> the Board of Assessors has had for several years a pretty good GPS unit. Uh, I think they're interested uh, in applying for uh, a grant. Um, yeah, I just yeah. Uh, did that today, actually. I have a few words on that. But, uh, but they, all, they, they already have a... A, 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 a unit, but yeah. getting more uh, software to... Yeah, it'll system. be easier to yeah. for, for the interface. So is it really a camera, or does it just record uh, it, GPS it, coordinates? It, it, uh, it records the GPS. Uh -huh. for, for, sir, um, I've used it in the cemetery project. A lot of the stones, are, uh, the points for the stones are already <coughs> recorded. But the problem has been the, you know, accessing the data. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Williams has also used uh, the unit. Uh, she's involved in um, <coughs> researching the old roads here in town. Hmm. And um, she's recorded the layouts of some of the old roads that we've explored. Um, so um, th there's use for, other than assessor's business for this GPS unit. So I'll, I'll move to a permit. The use of the GPS uh, assessor's camera uh, with the permission of the assessor and uh, yeah, and following all guidelines and rules set yeah. forth by said assessor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. yeah. yeah, I'm not sure exactly why I put it on the way I did. I think it was just a topic of conversation which had come up. Okay. Uh, and they're also uh, applying for a, a tablet um, that would have a lot more functionality, which. We don't have at this point, but we may get one. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, I, I'm sure that she would also love to help. Uh, and if we mean end up having another layer on the on our maps and yeah, that's the ultimate goal yeah, is yeah. to have another layer on our maps that would apply specifically to the cemeteries and uh, you know the layout of the. In the cemetery, gravestones, plots, yeah, whatever. I mean, it, it would be quite useful and quite interesting. Uh, so I'll go ahead and work with Peter and Phil if you're interested yeah. in, in bringing a proposal to the select board. Yeah. Um, for the a perhaps a rejiggered cemetery commission. Now that there's a lot of really clear work. That could be taken on. That's really separate from. Yeah, the, one other of the things that stuff. the cemetery commission could do too <coughs> is help determine available space. Yeah. Um, so and, one, and policies and, and procedures. You know. <coughs> and yeah. Would that involve the the, the ground radar or well, the radar I, or? Well, <coughs> funny you should say that. that. That's another thing. There's a, on the October 26th, there's a Association for Gravestone Studies Regional Meeting in Westfield that's going to cover Long Meadows project using LIDAR and ground penetrating radar. Yeah. And I would like to attend that. I think it would provide some useful information for us and um, also some possible contacts. So that's a, it's a free workshop, but I, as I understand it, you'd like mileage um, probably from the same source. Yeah, I, I saw that. And I saw that in what you sent, and I'm uh, yeah. I'm going to approve that in advance so that you can. Attack. So is that a motion? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll second it. All right. And I think we're all said aye. 
Yes, yes. I heard him say it a couple times. Yes, yes. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. I'm glad you want to go. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> but um, as I say, I think it would be pretty useful. And, and you said somebody else wants to help with the mapping. Maybe they would want to go. Yeah, so. I'll, uh, when I get home tonight, I'll um, touch base with Great. Steve. Yeah. See if he wants to join me on this trip. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Williams might want to go too. <clears throat> Beautiful. You can get so, a careful. Yep. So. Um, All right. Okay. Anything Beautiful. else? No, I'll be in touch, or you be in touch with me about. Yeah. So we're going to postpone, it, you know, thinking about the request for the plot and yeah, yeah, learn right. what the rules are, but also. Yeah. Um, that was just to let you know that this is right. Cemetery Commission, which which would yeah. be the the right way to do it. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Ah, not even dead. Don't forget your Oh, the very bad. <laughs> I thought I just saw you going up over. Uh, so other new business: possible MVP regional yeah. <laughs> grant with Deerfield. We didn't learn our lessons with. Ashfield last year. Yeah, that's that, that's pretty quick. Yeah, um, we have been invited to um, partake in a regional grant, and I had questions, and I asked them, and I I got for for me it was a surprising answer, which is just because we're in a regional um, agreement with some other town doesn't mean we can't apply for our own grants as well. We can apply for a Conway specific grant and not have Ashfield have to sign off on it. We're in the system now. We just applied to be in it with Ashfield. So, and there's no restriction on being part of other people's regional grants. That said, um, they are they're going with a you know a private consultant. He came up with several reasons why it might. Be good, you know. We could apply for money for uh, buying land that might be good for flood mitigation purposes, that sort of thing. Uh, but really, Deerfield is interested in floodplain mapping and things like that. So there. Deerfield, they had a, a seminar on floodplain plain mapping a few mm -hmm. months ago. Yeah, and you know, Kimber, Kimberly we at, at the FERCOG is involved in all of this, yeah. but they're not going through her for the MVP grant. They've, they've hired an outside consultant to work with them, who was the one who called me up and said, you know, are you guys interested in being part of regional application? The reason that they're interested in that is that it's a, it's a, it gets them points in terms of their application if it's part of a regional application. Would there be work here in Conway as part of it? I mean, that. Uh, yes, there, there, there would be, it kind of complements the South River work we would be doing as part of the first one in working with the Deerfield. But as everybody knows, the banks of the Deerfield are high enough in Conway so that um, there's relatively little Deerfield River flooding. Right. It, except insofar as it, it comes up the South River. And even then, it's only going to go up as far as the dam, the old dam. Um, so, you know, the, you. There, there's not a lot in it for um, Conway, but there's no, uh, there, there, the possible downsides that I thought of don't exist either. You know, that, there is a downside to but, applying for more than one, though. To reply, like my thing is that we've had we've had one town agency that for years now has um, been one town department that for years now uh, has been trying to get a grant. And that th that's what we ought to be supporting. That's the, the, if there's another town uh, mm -hmm. department or a, whatever committee that want, that's been applying for a grant, I'd support that too. But we have one of them, and that's for the down for the uh, community mm -hmm. compost, community, community septic. Yeah. And that's a perfect thing for an MVP grant, because it affects the water, that's interesting, and mm -hmm. um, but but we don't. I, so, but, and, and that's what you know. That I don't. Mm. That's something that would that that would help our town because we have we're going to have to do it sooner or later. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it'd be great if someone else pays for it. Yeah, we do have mm -hmm. a mass works application, which is the, that, the best match for that. Um, 
we're unlikely to get it because MassWorks <laughs> applications require that there be an economic development and I, and, component. And Joe was doing his best to shoehorn that in, uh, but um, and I, what I don't know is is the uh, the uh, dollar value maximum of, of the MPP grants. Um, my well, considering my considering that we signed it, on for to one to fix the dam in Ashfield, which was a three hundred, which was a three quarter of a million dollar project, that's like roughly the dollar figure of the community septic. So, um, yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't be that for for uh, yeah. I, I was uh, for a minute confusing design and the implementation with, but there are now implementation grants for MVP, and it has just been refunded. So, um, well, again, it wouldn't prevent us from doing that. So, um, and, and 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 like the, your other again, idea was waiting till next year. I, you know, I'm of the opinion that the the recession's coming sooner rather than later. But even later, I mean, the the idea that. I, all these things, if there was any chance to go for it this year, you go for it this year, because next year, the, just anybody reading the tea leaves, it just doesn't look as good, and um, maybe a lot worse. Well, that's true. Well, I, I, will, I will check that out with Joe, and uh, there's, no re there, there's no reason that we couldn't do both, but that's a, that's a good... Um, that's a good idea, and uh, I will I will work with Joe. See, but it, but it doesn't mean that we couldn't that we couldn't sign on with, with Deerfield. But I'm happy to uh, to uh, put off yeah, any further discussion for a couple of uh, weeks. I, I, I see. I, you know, I'd like this. I one. thought that the the fellow was was actually going to be here tonight, and I don't know. Maybe he'll come at six thirty or something. But uh, in any case, I think. Oh, to talk about the grant. If he does, we can uh -huh. we can do that. Okay. But I'm I'm happy to leave it alone for now. I just don't see that there's that there's Deerfield flooding work that we need to worry about. Very no, much. no, it's, and, it it would just help them get the grant. That's all. Yes, it would I, be doing nice Deerfield us, a favor. But, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay. I think uh, we're ready to move on. Speed bumps. I think that we look this way this time. Well, so we hear there's some new speed bumps in town. Um, the roadway going up to the salt shed, which is owned by Town Pleasant. We have right of way through there, and we had an issue with him. Well, there's been no contact with him um, that I, I, maybe Tom has, but I haven't. Certainly not before uh, they put up the speed bumps. Yeah. And so there was a concern because there was a sign that was put up saying that the driveway was going to be closed. Uh, you right. Friday and Saturday. I, that. Yeah. I had contact with him before it happened, and the Friday, that that Friday, because we were going in to set up the one-room schoolhouse for the Saturday mm -hmm. of festival weekend, and um, several people got alarmed at the construction sign mm -hmm. and wondered if there would still be access, and because there's handicapped people that come to that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. So I knew in advance, and I didn't call up Tom, and, and I, I know spoke that with you, was, and you spoke with me, and all of that happened. Apparently, about an hour or two before the people actually arrived and installed it, and the, the, very they, quickly they they put up the speed bumps right then. And yeah, and right after clock. that was the construction that caused them to close it. I guess I'm I'm not sure what was going on. Yeah, I mean you don't need two days to do what they did in an hour. I think. Mm. I, I don't know what the situation was. I, that's why I was trying to let you guys so, know what was and, going on there. And, it, yeah. We got construction going on up back. And I, I did call town council, and he, uh, you know, is very aware of the, the rights we have, is having the right of way there. And uh, I have an email out to him now that I'm still waiting for a response to. Um, but I think we need to send some kind of a letter. And the question is, um, 
do we send a letter saying we'd like to meet with you because we intend to move forward in a certain direction, or do we just say we're moving forward in a certain direction? And I, I kind of think it's always nice to meet with people and, and talk it out. And Well, you met with him on Monday or Tuesday or whatever. Oh, well, he, he just came in and said, we did it. Um, and he also said that, that Ron said it was fine with him, which I understand is not exactly... Not exactly what... <laughs> I mean, uh, what you I'd be you all said. right with the speed bump, but just not the way they are. My concern is plowing, but to drive over them, I don't even know if a small car would get over it without dragging. They're, they're, they're pretty... Uh, they're very high? One of them is very hard to drive. The first one. Oh, so the first one is the one... And what, what magnifies that is that there's n traditionally speed bumps are sort of painted yellow where there's a sign that says bump or speed bump, whatever. There's none of that. So it's just the same black macadam that's always been there, a little bit newer. But um, Yeah, and if you're not paying attention, you don't yeah, realize it. So, you it. But, right. So, so that's just one smaller thing. But um, The other thing is I don't understand why you need two for what they're trying to do there because it, coming in isn't an issue you can see there's not an issue of somebody coming in you know you, you have the view of yeah. children playing it's the one coming out which has been my concern all along anyways um so i don't so I mean, and I, I know i know like a lot of it um you know i I know, I know everybody. I know everybody involved in this thing like really well. So this is kind of difficult for me because I'm actually fond of everybody involved. Um, so like, um, but the the like the uh, like like part of it is a feeling that um, or what, you know what I've heard from the landowner is, is that uh, you know the concern of the speed and the feeling that there was no other way to go about guaranteeing that their five year old grandson you know, will be safe around running trucks, et cetera. And so, like, I, I you know, and, and that he complained about this, like, or that he mentioned this to you or whatever to, on, to, to, to multiple nothing's, times. Nothing's and, been said to me ever. And, and so, like, uh, you know, I, the, the, without getting into, like, the he said, he said whatever, mm -hmm. um, like, if, if there's a way to sort of get past that point, to, 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 like, let the landowner think, you know, know that they've been heard about the speeding, and that um, you know maybe we can go forward with you know ripping them up, uh, the, just ripping the speed bumps off, um, it, with the acknowledgement that like it's been, the speed thing has been heard and it's been addressed and it's not going to happen again, kind of a thing. And the thing is, you can't guarantee it because it's a public access to town services, like the salt. It's not like you really have control over right. people and can go up and get sand. When I drive up there and get sand. See, right. and there's also yeah. sort of like a belief, I, I know, I think the landowner has expressed this, I think you have at some point, and um, you know, that maybe we, the town can create its own driveway next to that. And um, I really would like to. And, and I know I know you would really and like to. And you were working on that. But, uh, but when, you know, when, when, that, when that was mentioned to the school, they like freaked out. And that, um, be, just because of the number of close, of, of not close calls, but like scares that they've had, um, just of kids darting off in that general direction and how they all, already like, you know, whatever, and that, you know, five, 10, 15 feet closer, they're not at all comfortable with and, you know, let- but We can let, fix that problem. You know, and-, and put that, a fence up so that they can't. We're gonna have to do something probably for the new building. I mean, once we start functioning up there, we're probably going to have to do yeah. something to... Well, and, and, and that's probably another concern that they have is that pretty soon there are going to be a lot of trucks going up and down that, that road for construction. So Who's, who's concerned? Uh, the Pleasants. Oh, yeah. You know, because it, it, it'll be a busy place. Um, for a little while, but, you know, they'll... They'll forget about that next by next year. Um, but you know, I, it, if you're going to put a fence on the one side, why not just put a fence on both sides of the current driveway and keep? Can't. It's not they own the property. No. We don't. We can't put one on. They could put a fence, right? Or we could offer to do it if we're going to be putting it one up at town expense on the one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. So in any case, it sounds as though uh, it would be fruitful to have a meeting. 
to talk about it. And do you think they would come in, and do you think that would be helpful? If yes, Tommy would. Tom would come in for sure. But Tom's not the owner. Correct. So, so we, we we need the owner there. Um. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that may be where some of our problems are because I've talked to Tom, mm. not about speed or anything like that, but just in general, and he's been very pleasant to deal with, whatever. But the one that owns it now, solely with his wife, um, I've had one conversation with him, and it was about us working there on a Saturday. And which he objected to. Well, he came up and asked me to leave, which is, in my book, is, I mean, we're not any different than the neighbor on the other side of the hill. I mean, I mean, I would understand if it was, you know, Sunday morning or something like that, but um, I did it. I stopped. I went away for the day. But it, it's just one of them things that, you know, huh. it's not like we were... Huh. <coughs> Ten feet from their property with what we're doing. And You're you were working up, up, uh, up above, right? But you'd actually be allowed to be within ten feet of the property doing whatever well, you were doing. I understand yeah. that yeah. part. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's where I think the issue is. It's not. It, it's a relationship more than. than well, I think it's more that they're trying to curb whatever they can curb from the town doing anything there. And it's just going to. You know, there's just going to be more happening there with the shed. And so. then once we finally move completely down there, I mean, there's going to be movement there all the time. And you say it's the school that's objecting to moving the driveway? Because I thought that was happening, so I didn't realize that had been stopped. No, no I, the no, historical society wasn't stopped. thrilled with it, but um, the principal and the school were like well, I can, I'll, pissed. I'll go I'll talk to her and... I don't have a problem talking to the school. I mean, I, mean, I, I just hadn't had time to, before when we talked about talking to these other people, and I just haven't had time yeah. Yeah. to do that. And then when I said something the other week or so ago to Tom, he says, well, we probably ought to restart the whole process or whatever. So. We don't want to have a bad relationship with the owner. so. No, I, I don't, and I'm yeah. trying to do what I can to make, you know, things reasonable. Well, um, it, it's my understanding from a brief conversation I had with town council that um, this would consist, you know, that the speed bumps are a uh, are something that we can pretty well say within within case law um, is an obstruction of our right of way and um, I, I you know I, I think at some point we'll probably have to assert our rights uh, as Ron said plowing is going to be a problem too um, and well, so that, that could be happening within a month or so mm -hmm. so so I would I would I would or sooner I would well, like I uh, just to continue working with town council on a letter and maybe bring that to the select board next time. That would be great. Do you think we can have them come in and talk to them ahead of time? Or? Well, this, I, I, I want to do things in, in, in proper order, and I think knowing where we stand legally anyway okay. is good. And I can you know, distribute drafts of that letter. Um, with people not talking amongst themselves, but giving comments back to me or town council. Um, and so in a couple of weeks, I can have something that's probably pretty good. That will be, a, I, I think we need to do this formally because um, it's an important issue and there are legalities involved and uh, we need, just need to take it step by step. I agree with that. Right. I mean, if they came in and discussed what they were looking to do, I mean, not saying that we would say no to it, but maybe we'd add some kind of, regu you know, thoughts on how, you know, what they're putting in for speed bumps or whatever. But, you know, I mean, without talking to them and, you know, them just going and do something, just 
doesn't seem to work very well. Though. Well, and, and then and then you know, there will have to be a period of time in which the town decides what it's going to do about it. Right. You know, what it's going to ask them to do, and and, and that sort of thing. So I, you know, it, it's nothing that's going to be a quick fix, but um, I think at least starting so, off with a draft of a letter from town council would be a good way to, you know, focus our attention. And I would also be interested in town council's opinion on what the options for the town are going, I mean, the letter is one thing, but yeah, what, yeah. Are, what are the options going forward? And uh, the recommendation. I on hope the, they have a recommendation. Yeah, a recommendation right. on one of those options too, if, if but what what a legal process would look like, what a non-legal process would look like, what possibilities exist. Yeah. Okay. All right. Happy to do that. So we didn't used to have a speed limit sign there. Are you saying that there was a speed limit sign for a while or never? But there is one now? He, he, he seemed to think that some that they put one up on the shed at one point is, is the impression I got from There's uh -huh. a sign there that says slow. Uh -huh. That's by the chick. That's, that's coming the other way. That's going... Coming down. Yeah, that's coming, coming down. downhill. Well, I Which think is it's, where it's, the it's, issue is, and no matter how you look at yeah. things, even them coming out of the building, it, that's where it's an issue both ways. But when you're coming up in, you can see if anybody's on the lawn there in front of the, the sheep barn. It's when you're coming down that you cannot see if somebody's playing there or coming out, because they do come out there onto the... So below the sheep barn, back that you can't see around the or corner. Or through the sheep barn, anywhere through, through the sheep uh -huh. barn or below. They were yeah. talking about putting up a fence there. No, they were talking about putting a driveway there, coming out there onto the pavement. All right. That's where my issue is. I mean, if that happens, and we're even greater risk of having something major happen. But they would be within their rights to do that. Yes. So let's let's not needlessly so complicate we'll, it. <laughs> let's start with the complications we already have. All right, okay. I will uh, I will go ahead. And so do did that. you talk to the historical about the driveway getting moved over? Yeah. Not happy. Even if they ended up with some parking spots in front of their schoolhouse, that's... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there already sort of is, is sort of one, uh, sort of, um, there is, uh, a, a, the, the one tree it needs to get taken down for sure, but the other one looks like it maybe could hang in there a while longer. Well, there's one of, the one closest to the schoolhouse, that one's getting ready to fall over. Uh, well... Am I right? I, I mean, that's right. what we looked at, right? So, I, I mean... I think it's unpredictable. I think that's what you'd have to say. But there is one dead one there that does need to come down. So that would be one. All right. I mean, Se separate yeah. issue. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's open one day a year. You know, they have weddings there now. We've had weddings there in the spring now for three or four years in a row. At the school one? Yeah. Oh, really? But, um... Hmm. Well, I know the school still uses it for classroom and stuff. And a music video there was second in the NPR's tiny desk, desk competition <laughs> that nationwide. But, Wonderful. Um, All right, more on that later. And so our you. last item for new business has to do with electric chargers. And uh, I, I did begin to look into that. I found a bunch of documents. I, I, I dropped the thing off on your desk. Yeah, you dropped that off and, and I went deeper into the, the state. I don't have anything to report yet. Um, Shelburne uh, does have a couple of dual chargers and they installed them at somewhere upwards of 40 cents per kilowatt hour and they got complaints so they've dropped it to 33 now. So. Um, so I dropped off three copies in the hopes that they would make it onto the agenda or whatever. I should have been clearer about that for sure. Oh, but, sorry. So yeah, I, like, I, I, yeah, and especially to get Bob to get Bob a didn't copy see of that. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I just I put it with my other stuff, and I, I wasn't ready to, you know, come up with anything major on it yet. But I, I'm happy to send any kind of information around. I did. I did also um, speak about it with the. School committee, the county school committee members. Oh, good. Um, they were, everybody's all in favor of that. Um, 
and we did ask the school to do a survey of their own faculty, um, just like Deerfield mm. did of the Frontier people. And uh, there are no current uh, staff or faculty members that drive an electric car. And there's no firm, uh, uh, there's a few that are thinking about it possibly in the, for, in, within the next couple of years, but nobody could say for sure that they're getting one in the next couple and, of years. And that's so. typical, but, you know, that's, and I expect they will. But, but, and, they, and but they have no objection whatsoever to one to one being there, the and they have no problem with members of the public parking their vehicles there, whatever. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah, that would be no, very rare. Not, but not at all. Not no problem. They're all everybody for coming it. down one sixteen. They're heading right for that Conway Grammar School. Yeah, so, on. so, and they would drive there, and they would park there for how long? The four six hours. Midnight would, to 6 a.m., they'd be camped out there. They would park their car there at, at uh, 5 o'clock at night and walk walk home. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I mean really. It, it, yeah, there's no coffee shop, is there? Right. It's, it's not a destination you know, there are, there other are, than the people who work at the school. There are uh, soccer, baseball, softball games there all weekend, yes. all during the school year and summer. And that's like that's two, three hour chunks of time. And, there's and that's perfect. Parents with kids that go to that playground. Yes. Um, and that playground needs a lot of work and might be the subject of And in the same way, we can put one down here in this parking lot yes. and it would be used by yeah. people coming to sporting events. Exactly my earlier yeah. thought. Right. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, uh, okay, I'll have great. something more uh, next time. Walter, I think we're at you now. Oh, good. Value engineering. Yes. We caught another lucky break. Awesome. An item not anticipated 40 hours in advance of the meeting. Let's not call them lucky breaks. Uh, you know, you, you're, we're yeah. anticipating things well. Um, the, uh, the story is that uh, I spoke to Vreeland about the fact that he hasn't been as prompt as we want. And we went over his plans for dealing with plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. And um, he basically doesn't know those fields real well, on, and certainly not in the commercial thing. And I found this out when I went up there and I talked to him about the HVAC, because I was confused about how it worked. And I thought, well, he'll straighten me out. And yeah. <laughs> That didn't happen. <laughs> he was as I was. So he recommended an engineer, Richard Parks, who uh, has a company, a multi-person company up in Keene. And he's worked with him before. And uh, I went up and, well, Dave and I had a uh, joint phone call with the guy. And on that phone call, he pointed out a few things that could be taken out of the HVAC plan and redone. And uh, so it was my impression, I don't know that he actually said it, that his fee for value engineering, as a lot of people who do that, um, often pay for themselves in, in savings mm. uh, <clears throat> in construction or energy use or maintenance down the line. Um, and so I went out and saw him, talked to him, uh, was impressed with his plays, with his computers, what he does. And it turns out that he has worked with Vreeland and John Wyman before, and they have compatible computer programs so they can swap things back and forth. Yeah, that's they a lucky do. break. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wasn't quite lucky because I have to say Vreeland suggested this guy. What was lucky is that Debbie Anderson at the uh, Attorney General's office okayed this because we've used up our $30,000 for design. So I sort of steeled myself to talk to her to see if we could do value engineering um, and if it would be covered under that $30,000. So, and I, I was pretty sure I was going to get shot down, but uh, no. She said, okay, and she has said, um, 
since it'll be less than $30,000, presumably you may use any procurement method you choose. Value engineering services provided by announcements are not typically part of the original design scope. Therefore, they may be procured separately without impacting your initial 30,000 wow. fee mm. cap. Mm. Here it is. Congrats for thinking to even ask instead of automatically yeah. assuming that it would just be a problem. Just well done. I think it was everything cool. that you've just relayed. The the site visits. The not like, just pick. That's that's just brilliant. I'm just. Take yeah, a pick. it's just. And she's saying this is typical too, which you know exactly this scenario. That, I guess, yeah. that it's a, that it's often purchased afterwards. Yeah. So in terms of um, money and scope of thing, he sent us a proposal here, um, and uh, we have decided that we'll leave the plumbing with Vreeland and John because there are virtually no changes to the plumbing. This guy can't really justify working on that. Uh, I would say on a long shot we might go for it if somehow Vreeland gets sick or if they fall behind mm -hmm. terribly. But one really good thing about this is it's going to speed things up. I think we're going to get a design so we can present something at a special town meeting. Um, I'm very nervous about um, really being able to deliver the goods. And of all Before the, the end of the year, the calendar year. Yeah. yeah. And of all the, the worries stuff. I've had or the, the things that haven't gone quite right yet, it has to do with timing. Uh, and I've been a little disappointed, I have to admit. Um, with how it's gone, we hard getting phone calls back and so forth. So this is going to take a tremendous load off of them. They're going to contribute four thousand dollars, cut their fee by four thousand. Uh, I think they should cut it by more, and I tried to get more. Um, How'd you get them to do that? Means? Well, they're not going to have to do this work. The yeah, yeah. Right, right. They're not going to have to do this work. Um, so, and we also get some, we get the ability to talk to this engineer. We get some supervision from this engineer. So I think he's really going to fill in hmm. some of the gaps in Raylan's expertise. This makes perfect sense to me. Um, Seems like money well spent. I think it is. I, I think it may make itself back again. So it's certainly, it's, there will be an offset to whatever we pay this guy. So is the HVAC that you're currently looking at the same one that we were looking at in the old design? Yeah. He's, he is value engineering the old design yes. and coming up with a new design. Great. So for example, in HVAC there was a unit for preheating the makeup errors that came into the building. But he says with the radiant slab, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. So you can cut out that unit, you can cut out the piping to it, you can cut out the extra boiler capacity, and you can cut out the fuel that you're going to use to do that. Hmm. So there's a decent amount. I didn't ask him how much money that is, but I think that's half of his HVAC fee right there is my guess. Yeah. I don't know for sure. And uh, so. I'm really pleased with this, and I'm really pleased that Tom found a way that we can get this rolling. Um, it's it's just been a great thing how it's how it's gone. Um, and, uh, yes, because they're um, licensed engineers, um, they are exempt from 30B procurement supplies and services. Um, if we were doing it under the construction law, it wouldn't be, but again, Debbie Anderson said, You're, you have your choice of, of procurement methods, so we'll use 30B, and Appendix 30A says they're exempt, so. And so this total of these two numbers at the end here, the six and the 8,900? Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Just kudos for having the awareness that that the, cur that the current setup wasn't working the way you wanted it to and doing something about it too. That's just... Well, we got such a bargain from Vreeland that it's not so surprising. I, I think he bit off a little more than he could 
shoe, but we're still coming up way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And he's got a great relationship with the Kurtz people. We're getting a lot of information back and forth because of that, so that's really helpful. And I have a video I took today of the site up there, if you guys are interested. So yeah, I walked around it last Saturday oh. the, when the schoolhouse was open. I, boy, they're moving a lot of dirt. Wow. But sure, show your video. Okay, well, do you want to... Could, could we set it up so we can watch it with the camera? I don't, I don't know whether that'll work or... If we can put it, would it be something we can? I love to watch it, and then we can put we'll it on the town out. website. Well, I'll go over and watch it somewhere else. What is can you story? focus in on that, Dan? I, might I, I don't know if that'll work, but that would be great. So I'm standing up uh, on a hill. Ron created this quite nice up behind the thing. He's made a road behind, or he's in the process of making a road behind that wall. Here I'm just that that wall was a 17th century, or is an 18th century really? uh, wall protected by Drains. The state law. Yeah. Uh, sloping in four different directions. Uh, form boards already up, with the exception of just those few right there. Great. Wow. Great. That's a lot just since last week. Are they going to be pouring the slab on that? They're going to pour the slab on that. I think. Um, I don't know how much they got to do a lot of rebar and so forth, so I don't know when they're going to pour. But uh, they've wasted no time in getting up these forms at the edge, and I think Ron's really done a nice job with the grading. Um, as I said it here, this is the drain that comes out of the building. Ken arranged to get the materials for this. And then you see Ron has divided this into four pies in each case. So he was all, able to... All sloping down to All that. sloping to do... Yeah. There are two drains, so half the slab yeah. does one, yeah. half the slab does the other. And uh, uh, I think this was pretty tricky work, And but you can, you can even see in this picture how the yeah. picture yeah. is slightly different in the, in the various pie sections. Um, and this pie arrangement so forth came about between Ron talking to uh, Gene Kurtz and that back and forth and they figured out how they're going to do this. So mm. That was nice. So, that's what we got. Very yeah. nice. Wonderful. We have a naming contest. Naming rights. We're going to sell the naming rights. Naming rights for... For the garage! TV Waterhouse, you know? They, they, not, just, not just the home of the Boston Celtics and Boston Bruins. Well, we have to put up a sign that we had to take Coca Cola or Burger King or something, I suppose. I would do that for a couple hundred bucks. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking for a vote to approve this money. Yes, and a signature on it so I can. Tell him. And do you have an original for us to sign? Yes, yeah, an original. The original. Yeah, you did circle and mark I, I did. I marked this up. I'm sorry. There, there's two, and uh, we'll give oh. them both to him, and he'll send one back to us. Yeah, sign right about me. We can date it too, I guess. So, can I have a motion that we're going to approve this money now? A motion to approve uh, six and eight. Fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Yeah. Yep. For value engineering, do, do, yeah, value engineering uh, for the maintenance building. Highway value maintenance. engineering contract for the highway maintenance building, and I'll second it. So we have a vote. Aye. Yes. So there's our official vote. Wonderful. Are we signing both of these? Even though I wrote on yes. this one. Yes. Yes. So. Well, I can make you a. Uh, That's okay. Okay. Do, you, do you still have one I give you? Oh, maybe you could sign that one. <laughs> if it hasn't changed. I thought no, it hasn't changed. Our, my copy, but. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Last time we did one of these, it changed at about two o'clock in the afternoon before we. Uh, I printed this out from the same it. file, so <laughs> they're identical. I 
thanks for making this work. Thank you for uh, making this work. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for uh, pushing it through. Okay. You made it, Walter. Yeah, we're trying. Thank you. Thank you. Tell up at you. Oh, yes. Town administrator update. Not the. Uh, the administrator update. Yes, yeah. yes, there we go. Thank you. Town administrator. That's, that's good. Uh, there's one note under committees. The Open Space Committee has been working with the Highway Department around their needs and desires regarding mowing. It's quite a long and productive meeting. Um, so are we in agreement? I mean, is there, there is understanding. There is okay. understanding. Um, in departmental news, uh, as was mentioned, the first two Town Academy sessions went well. The first had a total of 20 attendees, of whom 11 were not there in some official capacity, which I believe is a very good number. Uh, the second had 17, nine of whom were not there in an official capacity. Uh, this Thursday is Public Works, followed on October 24th with Public Safety, Police, Fire, and Ambulance. So if the town's operations in those areas interests you, come and hear more. Come meet the department heads and talk about those, those departments. Uh, we received an update on our OPEB liability, other post-employment benefits. That's the health care uh, that the town pays half of after people retire. The liability is slightly down from 1,490,000 to 1,469,000. If we continue to invest $20,000 per year into the fund, it would take about 75 years to reach that number. Oh. At a 50000 annual investment rate, it would take about 30 years. The arguments in favor of funding OPEB at a greater pace include a better bond rating. OPEB has a weight of about 5% in a bonding agency's rating. The main arguments against more OPEB funding is that Conway can easily pay as we go and it ties up taxpayer money, though the savings could be a windfall in the case of a major change to the structure of health care funding. Uh, the state's Rural Policy Advisory <coughs> Commission published its Rural Policy Plan October 2nd, which is available on the Franklin Regional Council of Governments website. It documents rural disadvantages and proposes a state office of rural policy. As of 2.30 p.m. today, the report was, had still not been posted on the state's Rural Policy Advisory Commission website, perhaps demonstrating the need for a state office. <laughs> I submitted a grant application for the town hall lift to the Massachusetts Office on Disability. We will need a town match of $50,000 to get $75,000 from the state, a 60-40 match ratio. I also submitted a grant proposal for a community compact IT grant for $76,000 for the assessors for both hardware and software that will make their work easier and provide more information to the public. We received the very first version of a new Department of Revenue um, Division of uh, Local Services Long Range Financial Planning Tool. It is quite complex, but DOR is more than willing to help walk the town through the spreadsheets. I have contacted them to ask for proposed training dates. Anyone who wants to look at it? Uh, happy to send it along. It's extremely complex. <laughs> that's, that's not a big sell for getting people uh, to it. I would, I, would, I would be interested in going to one of their trainings, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I will let everybody know yeah. uh, when they come to town for that. Um, it's a template that has to work for any municipality. Uh, so there's one sheet amongst 20 that is particularly useful for Conway, yeah. uh, but others are more or less useful as well. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, Council of Governments traffic counts for Elm Street and Bridge and Reed's Bridge Road are in, and I have forwarded them to the police and highway departments. They will help show any future changes in traffic patterns around the center of town. How will they help show future changes in traffic patterns? Um, well, we'll compare. We'll do another traffic count in five years and see if they do. There's more or less. They do another one in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the main reasons for uh, for doing. It. I know there had been uh, there had been concern about um, GPS routing people. The GPS does people that through uh, yes. through this other way. Unfortunately, we did not have those those uh, locations um, five years ago. Yeah. It's not GPS that does that. It's the Apple Map algorithm. And well, yeah, but that's what yeah. he means. That's what, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think it's just Apple? Does Google Maps not do that? Apple yeah, Maps Google, does yeah, that, the, yeah. The, the, those are the two. Right. Does Google do the same thing? Yes, they each have. Because it's probably a tenth of a mile shorter, so they'll give you the shorter distance. Right. And or if it doesn't take more the time. Library. Ah. Um, and finally, a recent article in the Recorder on community development block grants did not mention the one Conway participates in, in case anyone saw it and was wondering, uh, which is through the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. To set the record straight, Conway has assisted and continues to assist low and moderate income homeowners in need of housing rehabilitation. Even though we weren't in the recorder article, we do get Community development well, you, block grant money, and we do yeah. uh, have for, people in you town. Ask, who, you should ask our reporter to run an article on what we do instead of I, since, since they missed since they missed what we do. I asked the regional housing and redevelopment authority to send a letter to the recorder, and uh, they may or may not. It, it's very possible so. for the recorder to change their online stories, even when they can no longer reprint. Right, the paper. They, they they would but. they would need the data from. Franklin Regional uh -huh. Housing and Redevelopment yeah. Authority, so I'm hoping that they'll send them. So I do have some comments about your op the OPEB, um, just because I deal with this so much on, from the uh, regional school point of view, and uh, that's something that it's the regional schools that in, amongst, you know, that some of them are really, and our urban schools that are have such dramatic OPEB liability that it's kind of, it takes your breath away. And there's and a, some some cities and towns and do as well. Springfield and Holyoke and Worcester, Worcester and uh, uh, Worcester. Lawrence. And Worcester, I believe, has a three hundred million dollar liability. And I, I've heard that that, that that's like not uh, that that's extremely bad. But there there's such a recognition that the current setup, OPEB setup, is going to require a bailout by the state um, or. Uh, <clears throat> That that uh, yeah, this is one of those things, and, and I've talked about this a lot for years now. That this is one of those things that if you are super thrifty and super super responsible, um, there's going to be a penalty for that because you're not going to be in a position to take advantage of the handout when it comes, and um, and there will be a handout coming. There has to be because the it. You, but all of that just means that the way we're looking at OPEB is wrong. No, I mean it, 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 it means to be you know to be responsible, but responsible on the the conservative side of responsible instead of the well not even conservative but um, the the cheap side of the, the cheap side of responsible instead of the expensive side of responsible um, is, is like where I would want that con that continuum to be so. Um, I'm, I'm not. Too, I'm not that much in favor of what I'm saying of like increasing the rate yeah. that we fund it. Uh, well, and and we have never had any problem paying as we go. It's it's roughly half of a percent of our operating budget. It, it's nothing like what some of the cities and towns that have larger staffs and and more retirees are doing. I will note that the Mass Municipals Associations. Um, main way of tackling this is to um, try to repeal the law that says uh, cities and towns have to pay at least half of retirees' health care costs and, and let cities and towns not pay any health care costs of retirees. 
Um, I'm not sure that's the best way to get people into municipal no, it's not. Uh, work. <laughs> and but uh, as I as and I mentioned as well, bottom, a drive to the bottom, the race to the bottom is never my favorite approach to these things either. Um, but yeah. are those towns defaulting on paying their retirement retiree benefits? Uh, they're, yeah. they're they're only ever one budget cycle away from it. It, 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 that that applies to all cities and towns. Yeah, so so, that, so um, in in my view, um, in the long term, the structure of funding health care may change, and that may reduce the pressure on OPEB. But that's going to be a political decision at the federal level, uh, pretty much. And there's, you know, what can cities and towns do in the meantime? It's to me, um, very unfair that Conway is lumped in with Worcester as a community for whom OPEB liability is a major issue. Yeah. It, it's it's very unfair, and the only possible benefit that we would have to fully funding OPEB is that we would have a windfall of that saved money if all of a sudden we didn't have to use it. And that's not, to me, a good enough excuse for taxing people more to get that money up because in the future we're going to get a million and a half dollars, which is only a, a quarter of our an annual operating budget. It, it, you know, it would be something nice to have, but in the meantime, we can't use it. It does go into an interest-bearing account, but the only thing we can use it on is spending for retiree benefits. I did have an idea which was thinking outside the box and was not well received by other town staff. But I'll repeat it just in case anyone feels creative uh, in the future. Um, I thought that if we funded our OPEB account to the extent that we could pay our OPEB costs from the OPEB account every year, we could say to a bonding agency at one point, at some point, we have been fully funding our OPEB from our OPEB account for 10 years. Don't you think that counts for something? Then we can't do that now. We almost can. We almost I, can. I, I believe, I believe we, we're very close to being, I, well, we would have to put in a sufficient amount to cover the next years. and. It, it's just a different way of looking at it. It would force, right. I think, it wouldn't force the bonding agencies to do anything, but it would give them the opportunity to say, hey, Conway's OPEB liability is not as much of a problem as Worcester's. It really doesn't matter that much that Conway hasn't fully funded its OPEB. And I would need a lot more data you know, before I could like agree with that. Uh, you, know, you, you would need to know um, whether paying more actually would have the impact that, you know, not just a supposition, but like an actual, you well, know. Well, I, I, I have never heard of anyone even having that idea before. It, it's, it's, it would be a new approach, again. And, and it wouldn't, you know, right now we have about $50,000 in it. We don't pay out $50,000 a year in, in OPEB costs. But if we did pay it out out of that account, and we funded it every year, we could show that relative to Worcester, it's not a problem in Conway. And maybe the bonding agencies would say, hey, you know what? You're right. You know, we're not going to penalize you as much as we might for that because you are demonstrating that you're financially, you know, stable and secure regarding OPEC. I do just, so from the from just the you know the frontier point of view when when we looked into getting the bonding out the the capital capital renovations that are going to start next year or the year after next or whatever with the meetings coming up soon um, they the bond council over the summer um, looked at the OPEB uh, thing mm -hmm. and suggested an additional. They didn't have any problem with what the school was putting away every year. They had a problem with, not a problem, but if they adjusted where they initially started the, the calculating from, whatever, with another $50,000 lump sum, um, that, that it would, whatever. And so we ended up doing that. But the actual one, when I actually asked for data, 
about like does the savings and the bonds since we're doing like one year notes and everything does the savings and that whatever and there was a, there was a feeling that it did but that it was close and it wasn't you know um, you know we weren't we were well, spending a lot to save like he, uh, over periods of time but we were planning on repaying right, whatever and so there was a feeling that it was worth it but not by a whole lot yeah well it's something that we could do it's an argument we'd have to make they could take it they could not take it but it's the to me it's it's not that difficult a thing to do on the local level and um and and, and there's no real reason not to do it either so the, and there's also I, like our did town that town meeting didn't we create an opeb advisory committee to decide what to do with the interest income from it was that well, how, to, how to manage the investment income. And has that been created? Yeah, well, it was created by town meeting. Has it met? No. Well, <laughs> I'll, uh, I mean, one of the things I'll that look we, at that. So that was in Dan's request. So, yeah. Right, I mean, one of the things that we could do is invest the interest right. income in a way that pays for, pays, I don't know. All right, I, 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 I'm going to add that doing. as an item on the next agenda. Oh, great. So I'm done. Thank you. So concerns of the select. Um, Eddie. Not really heard from the fellow that, that came to your town academy half an hour early because that's what he was told. He wasn't too pleased about that. Oh. But, yeah, well. But, uh, yeah, he let, me, he let me know he wasn't too pleased. <laughs> On the town website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what? Yeah, check, check. He, of all people, he should have known. To check. Well, went out in a townwide mailing and it went out in all the tax bills yes yes and we have it on the website i don't know where he yes he was told it by someone hmm. well, yes yes ah well does that have anything to do with us actually so we have no mail well, apparently not any announcements i have not our next meeting october 28th two weeks right here same time so on our agenda we have two items for executive session and I think we're gonna postpone one of them yeah uh, because John's not here today and I think you would prefer to be involved and we are going to go into executive session for well for why, don't you, why don't you move so that so I will move <laughs> that yes that we go into executive session for reason number seven and that we will adjourn to, 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 to approve the minutes of October 8th executive session. Which yes. is just for approving the minutes. That's yes. right. Yes. yes. And uh, there, thereafter, and, to immediately to will, adjourn? We will immediately adjourn from that meeting. Yes.